Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So, in this video, we'll be looking at the identification of body fluid part, semen, and here we'll be looking about the prostatic fluid. In the previous video, we have discussed about the anatomy of spermatozoa. The second will be the prostatic fluid. So, let's discuss it. So, the prostatic fluid secretions, it accounts for approximately 30% of the ejaculate. So, this is also a major portion. This portion of semen contains high concentration of acid phosphatase and prostate specific antigen. So, here you have to to the enzymes which are acid phosphatase and prostate specific antigens. These are the particular enzymes which are present in high concentration in the prostatic fluid. And these both, they act as useful markers for the identification of semen in forensic laboratories. So, they... Uh, both the acid phosphatase and the prostate specific antigen the, these uh, two identifying features or the enzymes they play a major role or the they act as useful markers which helps in the identification of semen the epididymis and the bulbourethral secretions each account for approximately 5% of the ejaculate further apart from the prostatic fluid uh, the secretions of the bulbourethral and the epididymis glands they each account for 5% of the ejaculate. Let's learn about acid phosphatase enzyme first. So, what is acid phosphatase? Uh, these are enzymes that consist of group of phosphatases with optimal activity at an acidic pH environment. So, this is an enzyme which contains group of phosphatase that works uh, in acidic environment. Half-life of AP uh, at 37 degrees Celsius is 6 months. So, from here you can infer that with the help of acid phosphatase enzyme, you can detect the presence of semen up to 6 months at 37 degrees Celsius. That is the normal temperature of the body. However, the half-life is decreased if the sample is stored in wet environment. Why? Because the sample gets degraded due to the growth of bacteria and other microorganisms in it, which renders the uh, biological fluid unfit for the preliminary examination. Now, the AP activity can be detected from dry seminal stains stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius up to a year. So, they can work for a year as well if they are stored in perfect dry conditions of minus 20 degrees Celsius. Many AP tests utilized in clinical testing may be used to identify semen for forensic applications. So, there are various tests of acid phosphatase which we will be discussing in the upcoming uh, videos about the identification of semen. These tests are usually used for forensic applications in the forensic laboratories. The second major constituent that is present in the prosthetic fluid is prostate specific antigen apart from the acid phosphatase. So, a major protein present in seminal fluid at concentrations of 0.5 to 2.0 mg per ml. So, this is a major protein which is present. Small quantities can be detected in urine, fecal material, sweat and milk. So, PSA can also be present in minute quantities in these liquids as well, urine, the fecal matter, sweat and milk. They can also be found at much lower levels in the bloodstream. PSA is a protein that has molecule, molecular weight of 30 kilodaltons. And thus, it is also called P30. We also talk about uh, the constituent P30. It, it is nothing but the specific constituent of semen or the prosthetic fluid, which is the prostate specific antigen. Why 30? Because its molecular weight is 30 kilodalton. So, we specify it as P30. This is responsible for hydrolyzing semenogelin, which mediates gel formation in the semen. So, this PSA, it helps in hydrolyzing the semen and gelin component of the semen that helps in the formation of gel formation of the semen, jelly texture. Half-life of PSA at dried semen stain is about 3 years at room temperature. So, the half-life of AP was 6 months while the half-life of PSA is up to 3 years at room temperature. In the dried condition. In the wet condition, again, it will degrade or can be contaminated with the growth of other microorganisms, which will make it unfit for the identification of PSA. So, the best possible evidence comes in the dried condition, like the dried semen stain. Now, there is another third constituent which is present, which is called seminal vesicle specific antigen, which is also called SVSA. 
so this is also present in the prostatic fluid so human seminal vesicle specific antigen constitutes the major seminal vesicle secreted protein in the semen so basically it is secreted in the seminal vesicle uh, it includes two major types seminogelin 1 and seminogelin 2 so they both have different functions and the main function which we uh, learned earlier was the gel formation of the semen jelly texture the use of SG as a marker of semen for semen identification instead of PSA represents certain advantages. So, use of seminogelin or these seminogelin markers like the 1 and 2, they pose major advantage apart from the PSA. Uh, let's see how. In the detection of semen, because the concentration of SG in seminal fluid is much higher than that of PSA and this is beneficial for the sensitivity of detection. So, there is the concent greater concentration of seminogelin in the seminal fluid with respect to the prostate specific antigen due to which its sensitivity in detection is much higher than prostate specific antigen. This is the basic reason. This was all about this video. I hope that you all have understood about the prostatic fluid, the acid phosphat phosphatase enzyme, the prostate specific antigen, the seminogelin component of the semen. In the next video, we will be discussing about the preliminary identification of semen or the presumptive test that are usually used for the identification of semen. If you have any kind of doubt, you can ask in the comment section below. Uh, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. You can share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you very much for joining Savvy Forensics.